Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Bosworth. You know, all my life people have had the wrong idea about me. I don't like cops who make up the rules as they go. They say I push things just a little too far. They accuse me of being insensitive. <laughs> they basically say that I lack the ability to get along with others. So just to prove these people wrong, I decided to join a very exclusive and private club. Oh yes, it's very plush. And the membership? Very select. And games. <laughs> we play some games. A perfect place for me, wouldn't you think? Mr. Brian Bosworth requests the pleasure of your company, Stone Cold. Yo, Brian Bosworth, for anybody that don't know who Brian Bosworth is, Brian Bosworth is an anomaly when it comes to athletes and being a movie star. You know what I mean? Because Brian Bosworth, in college, he knew his worth. He knew he was larger than life. He knew that he, you know, he was swimming in vagina. He knew that the state of Oklahoma couldn't hold him down. He knew he was a superstar. So he went into the NFL, got drafted by the Seahawks, was a real beast, played uh, played for two years, and that following year that he played, he got yanked by Bo Jackson, got hurt, and said, fuck it, I'm going to Hollywood. <laughs> That's exactly what Yeah, he yeah, he had a very infamous two seasons with the Seahawks, and um, which, I mean, he had an injury that, through no fault of his own, I think, and, and I remember seeing a 30 for 30 on this. You, you, should, you should actually watch it, folks. Basically, his doctor said that he was 25 years old with the shoulders of a 60-year-old man. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you see this yeah, one? Yeah, he, he had arthritis in his shoulder. He had degenerative oh, arthritis. Oh, so he, oh, that shit just wrinkled up on him. That's which I feel up. bad, which yeah. I feel bad because whenever I see him on like the list of like the biggest flops, I'm like, was that really he, his fault? What? And you know what? Real talk before we get into it, like, yeah, before we get into it, to his, uh, to the movie itself, I mean, his movie career, yeah, he really wasn't a flop. He just played one season and well, I got two be seasons, honest, technically, but, two seasons, technically. Uh, either way, the motherfucker took a bet on himself and said, hey, I'm already, a, I could be a star. And to his credit, yeah, he could have been a star. And the first um, movie he did was Stone Cold. And after that, a bunch of bit parts. And next thing we know, he was commentating for the XFL. So there really wasn't a lot he was doing, man. You know the fun part about this, Chris? Here's mm-hmm. Eris. I don't know who the fuck this nigga is. <laughs> uh, look, now, when I first saw this, I just said, yo. I was like, somewhere in Hollywood, Brian Thompson is punching a goat right now. Brian Thompson has been living his best life. What are you talking about? Brian Thompson don't even he don't even have the word about Bosworth. But Bosworth was a Bosworth is what would happen if Red Brown was this much of a better actor. First off, see, see, first off, I, I have to really put this out there, Sue. 
You can't sit there and say Brian Thompson is punching the wall when Brian Thompson was in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. This guy has been in every pop culture TV show and movie. What the fuck is he? Is he really going to be jealous of Bosworth? Is he really going to be jealous of him? No, no, no. I didn't say he was jealous. I was saying that he could. Uh, all I was saying was that he was punching a goat because I'm sure he wanted to do this movie. No, no. He did a better movie. It was called Cobra. All right. I was just about to say because that's how this whole fucking movie starts out. Cobra. Wait, wait, it was such wait, wait, a. Yo. Wait a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Cobra. Hold on. This was 1991. Which Cobra are we talking about? Uh, what do you think we're talking about? Yeah, which about? Cobra do you think it is? It ain't Cobra Kai. No, I know. Dude, there's only one Cobra Sylvester, movie. Yeah, Sylvester that. Stallone's, yes, Stallone's that's Cobra. That was, nigga, that was the 80s. That was like mid-80s. I know, but this movie wanted to be... Let me tell you something, folks. When your movie starts off no, with, with the very... Yeah, right. no, but you're, no, but I know exactly what you're saying. I'm sorry. I know exactly I know exactly what you're going into. Yes, the, the opening act of this movie is straight out of Cobra. It's Home Alone and- Cobra. Lighthearted and fun. This, a, a, a bad guy slipped on a fucking can. Because actually, the whole scene with Dale just like Cobra, one guy. <laughs> all right, first off, everybody's freaking out in the grocery store. Brian, Bo- Bo- Brian Bosworth is wearing this leather jacket. Guys, what was with the super? What was with the saying suit of fucking shoulder pads that he had on his thing, man? Casually strolling down the aisle, getting food for himself. I love, I love how that's how he was getting groceries. Like, yep, this is how I go. This is what I wear to go get groceries. I rock this, like, I rock this, this smoking ass uh, leather jacket, and I just stroll in. Out of the whole movie, you will only see two black people total in this movie. This is the yeah. most whitest movie you will ever see in your oh, life. And there's <laughs> reasons why. There's oh, it is. Look, I'll say this, is, folks. I, I feel for how Booker T and a lot of the, a lot of the uh, ethnic people felt when they were in Sturgis wrestling. That had to be that had that had to be hell. That had to be hell. I I, I feel for them so bad. <laughs> I get, yo, that's a that's a perfect question to ask off Stevie Ray for his own podcast, this radio show that he does every week, man. Hey, yo, Stevie, how was Sturgis? And knowing Stevie, he was just drunk off his ass, saying, "Man, it was great, man. I don't know what y'all talking about." <laughs> White Ain't nobody going to want. Then again, it's like, nigga, you like, you like 6'10". Nobody better, I Dude, call but, you. But, but, but getting back to the Liefeld Huff. Because <laughs> Joe Huff, that, that's, that's, that's uh, right. Bosworth's character. He is on his Liefeld with the leather jacket and the fucking shoulder pads. I'm like, what leather manufacturer made that jacket? Hey, you want to know the best part about this? Uh, if I'm mistaken, uh, Bosworth was only was like what? He was only like 28 when he did this movie. Yeah, yeah. Looks like he's 40. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. I think, I think we like said he, it best. I think we said like it an best. Older guy. I'm just saying, Bosworth got some miles on him. He has some miles on him. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, it's the fact that there's a grocery store being held up by <laughs> by not Shawn Michaels. Yo, yeah. I, <laughs> I like the fight. I like the fact that this dude with a ponytail has a shotgun. They and he, they had a they had a, a a mini international team of terrorists take over the grocery store. Here's my team thing. of three. Here's my thing. <laughs> and I have no and I have zero problem with you know thugs being thugs. But what was the end game with this grocery store? Yeah, we're going to get all the money at this grocery store. All eight thousand dollars out of it oh, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa sir that's eight thousand dollars in 1991 money that go that can go some distance hey chris <laughs> if you do not get the hell out of my face <laughs> chris always trying to oh i love how chris always try to find a silver lining and shit like this whoa, 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 whoa. hey you know full of well though eight thousand dollars would go to distance back in the day though you realize that right Fifty dollars got you. It got you at least a week. But there was like six robbers, dude. <laughs> Gotta split that shit. And you know I'm two. Just... And you know two of them would get shot on the way back to the hideout. So you know, for eight thousand dollars, man, that's a bull thing. Dude, look, I know Reaganomics kind of fucked this country up for a while, but come on, bro. <laughs> come on, y'all. All I'm saying is, I'm looking at Bosworth like, how are you not hot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I agree. Oh, and they in the South? Yeah, he in Dude. fucking Alabama. How are you not hot? 
Look, the best part about this whole scene was not only they're like they're getting like solid snaked out out of this motherfucker. Home alone. So, <laughs> home alone. Yeah, home alone. But by the way, this nigga it. slipped on a fucking can and just launched himself backwards. Dude, I was just about to say <laughs> no. Even, no, 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 no. He, See, first, he, no, no, first he, of all, that wasn't even first of all that wasn't even a can. My man had broke open some Crisco and just put that on the <laughs> ground. I and, loved it because. And he just stood by the side, just like, yep, I'm just going to wait for him to run. He's coming. He's coming. And he launches launches himself out of a damn can and into that pile of sodas. Because as we all know, guys, when you slip on Crisco, you go you go at least 11 feet up into the air, then come down. We all know that. And you actually go forward at least seven feet. Yo, it looked like somebody tossed him into those cans. Can I stop you here? Can I, can I stop you here? See, we're only like five minutes into this movie. No wonder what about Bob whooped your ass movie opening weekend. There you go. Hey, Chris, hey Chris <laughs> did you see this movie? Oh, there's the one thing that we have to talk about it, about when this movie. This movie went to theaters, and here's the best part about it. Um, <laughs> it had a pretty big budget for 1991. <laughs> for 1991, what was that? It was about 20-something million? What was that? Where did it go? 25 million? <laughs> They spent $25 million on this movie. Now, now, you oh. might sit there and say, it's the cast. Let me run down the cast real quick. You got Bosworth, right? Okay. You got and, Les- I know Bosworth, Les- and you know Bosworth took a bigger cut than he needed to. Because real talk, and I really do mean this, Bosworth, like I said, has been making money since college off of his image alone. So, yes, he had to get a good slice of the pie out of this whole you movie. You had Lance what? Henriksen, which I finally accepted that he came off the set of Stone Cold and went straight into Hard Target the following year, still dressed the fucking same. Oh, you know he did. You know he <laughs> then did. Then you got... I, and then, I love, oh, go on, and go then our second movie that we've done with this guy, William Forsythe. Crazy-ass William Forsythe is in this movie. Yep. yep. And you know the be- And you're probably saying, so what did they spend the money on? Real talk, stunts and explosions. Oh, yeah. Stunts. There's a lot of stunts in this Every- movie. <laughs> Dude, there was everything. Was everything just rigged to explode? You sneeze and you explode. Yeah, it made <laughs> that really made no sense. Now I'm surprised I the want, guy in the grocery store didn't explode when he flipped over and hit the cans. That's all I'm saying. Now, now I want to point out. I definitely want to point out something from the from the grocery store. Uh, you could t- like just to, just to point out the fact this was 1991. <sighs> that Ghostbusters and Batman cereal though. Oh my god, the bad placement. <laughs> but here's the funny thing about it. Here's the funny thing about it. I will say this. It is is one of the um production notes I do have of it. Four million dollars was spent on production alone. On on uh, just the production expenses, four million went down. You mean to tell me you spent four million dollars on shit that wasn't even in the fucking movie? Uh, you know what that was, right? <laughs> now, folks, the whole purpose of this is a stone cold. If you've seen the trailer, it's a bunch of white boys on bikes and a lot of bikers. So you know there was a lot of drugs brother. flowing around. You know there was a lot of alcohol the- flowing around. I'm just four saying. Million it was the brothers. Dollars. Four million dollars. So person that's sitting down so how much did they spend on the money i mean spent on this movie 25 million dollars good god in 91 i hope they got that back no they did it oh they bottle, made bottle. About nine million back they didn't even make 10 million back which by the way um a boy Forsyth was also filming out for justice a steven seagal movie at the same time of this movie i gotta say Forsyth was a busy man at the time lance henderson was too but you know who wasn't Brian fucking Bosworth because he went through a drought after this. This nigga he, went on, yo, he went on Phil Donahue to promote this movie. That's when you know it's just uh, yeah, boss for real, boss. Yeah, he went to Phil Donahue to talk about this movie. You want to know? You want to know something else? Is the fact that this movie was produced by an Expendables level cast of <laughs> producers? <laughs> Bro, look at these names. Fucking Michael Douglas was a producer. I'm sorry, Michael Douglas. <laughs> Wait a minute, is it the Michael Douglas? Yes, Douglas? yes the, the Michael Douglas. Douglas. Wow. Basic instinct, Michael Douglas. Dude, there are no. I'm looking at it right now. There is eight damn names down here. Nick there, Grillo no, of the fucking God. Beach Boys. <laughs> Yo, are I'm not even. Sorry, I'm not even joking. Nick Grillo, Nick. who formed the fucking Beach Boys, is a producer on this movie. 
Hey, Chris, I got to say, it, are these the producers or part owners of an arena football league team? What is going on? It really on? looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Yo. Now, here's yep. the kicker. Here's the kicker of it all, right? It's directed by Craig Baxley. You know what movie he did, D? You know his feet, his his debut film. You want you want to take a guess? Was it Stone? <laughs> it was Stone Oh, I know what it was. It was I Action what? Fucking Jackson. Action Jackson, son. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's the best part about it. He actually was a stunt coordinator for the Warriors for the the and the Long Raiders, man. And he was a second unit director for Predator. We're dealing with an experienced director, actually, when you really think about now, now, it. Now, now, to be fair to him, though, he did do a movie that I low-key love, and, I'm, and, and, like, I, and, I actually own the, and I actually own the Blu-ray. I thought you just said it was Action Jackson. No, 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 no. I own this movie on Blu-ray. It came out. Shout-outs to Shout Factory for this. Uh, I Come in Peace, Dolph Lundgren. Mm. That is actually, yeah, that is a... That is a, I can't say underrated movie because I've seen it once, so I can't even judge it properly. I aliens, don't the aliens that basically live off of fucking narcotics and drugs. <laughs> that, that's, that's interesting in and of itself. I'm sorry, are you talking about aliens or are you talking about all the bikers in this movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is very interchangeable. Very, you know what? very interchangeable. Other than that, he's directed a lot of uh, TV movies. I know what you're probably saying. Did this motherfucker do any other movie that had a wide release? No. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. The next movie he did was straight to DVD and it starred Bruce Payne. Yes. Wow. Mr. King of I'm Everywhere, direct DVD, movies everywhere. That Bruce Payne? Yeah. Bruce Payne, the dude that was chewing the scenery a little bit too damn much in the Highland, in the, high, in the third Highlander movie. Hey, I love that. that. I love that Highlander no. movie. Because <laughs> I'm sorry. That was not Endgame, was it? Yeah, it was. Highlander it was Endgame. Endgame. Yeah, it was Endgame. Now, the only other movie that Brian Bosworth had that actually had a wide release was The Longest Yard. And I got to be honest with you, he was okay in that. Got to be was- real. Um, You know, you know, uh, D kind of hit me to this. For the longest time, and maybe because of the current political climate, I really swore to God, I thought Brian Bosworth was one of those Make America Great Again dudes. And thank, I mean, knock on no, wood. No, but. That means, hey, I looked it up. I looked it up. I saw nothing. But how much do you want to bet he's one of those guys when he sees one of the, um, one of the uh, players kneeling on a <laughs> kneeling during the national anthem, he just slowly <laughs> shakes his head. He's not vocal about it. He's not vocal just about it. Just shaking his head like, uh. Oh. It's just like it's like this, Chris. He won't get on no. He won't get on ESPN or say, "Oh, these players." It's just to him. It's a little bit disrespectful. Just that, <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. I know he was also in Three Kings. Yeah, briefly. He was Three Kings. What was he doing in Three Kings? Nah, he was. He was. Um, the funny Stock thing. Stock he... number five. <laughs> now, nah, what it was is it was at the end of the movie when um, what's his face ended up becoming going to Hollywood to become like a, a consultant. Um, what's his face? Um. George Clooney, yeah, George Clooney at the end of the movie when he became like a Hollywood like consultant for the military, Bosworth popped in as like an action star and stuff, and Clooney was showing him. It was like a brief like two seconds you see Bosworth and stuff. Yeah, that that's that's Bosworth's career in a nutshell. It's it's nothing to write home about, but hey, you know, according to D, you know, he saved up his money. Wait, D, this is for you. Twenty fifteen, do you believe? Oh yeah, didn't you say he's uh, like a firm oh. like Bible, like he's like a man, of the, man of the Bible and shit now? No, 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 no. no. It actually goes recently to a podcast that you and I just had. We was talking about Corbin Benson, actually. Oh, Corbin but Benson. No. Okay, I got yeah, I got mixed up. Got mixed up. I was about to say that too. Yeah, while he's one of those guys, it's just a bit disrespectful not to stand for the flag type of thing. Like I said, not loud about it. A part of me thinks he's one of those Christians that. Don't like abortion. He's, he just looks like one of those Christians. <laughs> actually, um, come to think of it, um, he, he actually is in a, a series of, of, of Bible movies. It's called The Revelation Road. Wow. Where so, they, where uh, it's basically about the rapture and like the post-rapture and how shit has like gone downhill. That's what doing? Yep. The Revelation Road series. Yo, so so you mean to tell me, Brian Bosworth, a man who swam in a whole bunch of vagina in the late 80s. This is late 80s vagina. That means that was 
full of cocaine. Yeah. That type of <laughs> that guy is now a super born again Christian and he's doing wow. Teamed up with Kevin Sorbo in the last he Revelation Road movie Kevin too. Sorbo, I don't want nothing to do with him now. Now I don't want <laughs> nothing to do. I don't I don't think Bosworth I think Bosworth just looking at Sorbo like you were Hercules. What are you doing in this movie? <laughs> no, no, no. Bosworth. No, you know what Bosworth said? And I guarantee you this came out of his mouth. All right, Kevin, look, look. That's not all Arabs. <laughs> 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 oh, great. Now I, have to, now I gotta look up this nigga's Twitter. Great. Now, 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 now here's thank, the thing. Now, here's the you, thing. Chris. Now I gotta look up his Twitter, dude. <laughs> I mean, I'm like this. So, what had me rolling was like when D posted this video up, I didn't know how bad this was. So we get the beginning of the movie where all the bikers are doing the usual biker shenanigans. We get half-naked women. We get them shooting cans off each other. Half-naked. Well, butt-naked. Never mind. Fully (laughs) foam butt-naked. My bad. And they're shooting cans off themselves. Now, here's my thing. If you want me to believe that you're shooting at somebody, somebody has to sit there and take a bullet when you miss. Nobody took a hit on the bullet when he missed. No, I'd also like to point out that these weren't extras. This was an actual biker gang hangout that they were filming in. And this was and this was just legit B-roll they shot. Everything was all in one take. Oh man. I mean, Forsyth shot a dude shot a can off the dude's shoulder. And I'm like, how did the dude not get killed? Oh boy took he took a makeshift Uzi and shot not just the can, but shot up a car that exploded. Yo. I like the fact that not only did he shot the can off a dude's face, but he kept firing. And it's like, yeah, not a single bullet. None of the bullets hit homeboy. It did. Like you said, he hit the car. He hit the car maybe four or six times before the whole car. And no, he's hitting the middle part of the car. He's not hitting a gas tank. He's not even hitting the freaking engine. Bye. A window breaks and window breaks, kaboom. Well, crazy. And said, well, you know, you know what exploded, right? It wasn't the guns. It was Forsyth's laugh. That's what exploded it. Yes. Fuck yes. <laughs> Forsyth's laugh caused the explosion because let, let's just be real here. This movie is going off of video game rules. I mean, so when we see Bosworth, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on for one second, guys, because I told you, Chris, I had to look it up. Mm-hmm. I am currently on. Brian Bosworth's Twitter page, which is <laughs> not Boz44. And you and I gotta say, Bosworth is not the same man he used to be. He said he has it on his little thing, playing on only one team, followed by one captain. Psalms 119, verse 44. Wow. Which I say to myself, you know what, Boz? Good for you. I really mean it. And let me show you how good he's doing. Now Trust me, I'm going to be looking up the rest of his tweets while we're talking. <laughs> just to make sure. But he said, just went through a pat down at the airport. TCA agent asked me if I was wearing Spanx after the fris- frisking was over. All I could do was smile. Good for you, boss. You're still you're still getting hit on by women. Good for you. I will stop us again if I trip over something racist. I will stop. <laughs> all, sudden, all you gotta do is type in Brian Bosworth Kaepernick and then boom, you're good to go. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I think I'm about to do that right now. But anyway, let's get it. Anyway, so when we see Brian, we see him in the kitchen doing the most see, I want to say white shit, but I'm pretty sure there's huh? a lot of other different ethnicities that do this shit. This dude making a protein shake. I'm thinking this for himself. This dude putting orange juice, puts in potato chips, bananas, Crack- banana. Yeah, banana. Hot peppers. Eggs with the sh- no, eggs with the shells. Snickers. Yo, to stoop the two Snickers, I'm like, he's going to eat this. Nope. He gave it to his pet Komodo dragon. To which I'm like, Komodo dragons dude, eat that, that? Really? Dude, that's what I said when I, like, when I saw it. I said, is that a Komodo dragon? I had to use the line that Mike Nelson said on Rift Tracks when they did this movie. Wait a minute. He has a Komodo dragon as a pet. I don't think this guy plays by the rules. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, I mean, I mean, what's no? I mean, seriously, what's next? Like, like seriously, what's next? You're gonna be cutting pizza with like with scissors? Uh, Yo, 
That was his, that, I guess that was his way of cutting uh, pizzas with the scissors, man. So he's giving this <laughs> to Komodo I'm Dragon, trying, right? I'm, but I'm making my, I, I'm gonna be making my connections to Cobra. So oh, no, because there's a lot of them. You can, it's, yeah. So anyway, so the FBI comes to this door, and they tell him, you know, hey, we need you to go undercover. We know that you're not work. You haven't been working for the past couple of days. So I'm working a suspension, but we need you. So he gets in the car, and guess who he's sitting next to? Don King from Rocky Five. Let's see, George. Yep. Washington Duke. Yep. <laughs> Ryan Grant. Touch and me Gant. and I sue. <laughs> Ryan Gant. And you're probably saying to yourself, I know him. Trust me, you know him. You've seen him in everything black. You know him. Oh, you mean Richard Gant, <laughs> not Brian Gant. Richard, Richard. I say Brian Gant. See, that, this is why I'm looking. I'm looking at Brian Bosworth shit. Shut the fuck up. Go ahead. Hey, hey, but sit, but, hey real talk, though. I, I kind of I got up and uh, clapped my hands when I saw Richard Gant. He's a recurring character in Greenleaf. I was like, yes, he's still working. Yes, oh, of course he's still working, man. Gosh, he's he's gonna he's gonna still work, hopefully. But it fits hopefully. Greenleaf because he looked like one of those deacons in the church, and sure enough, he is a he deacon in the church. Like a deacon that, that he looks like a deacon who um who uh, uh, uh cheated on his wife. He just looks like it. <laughs> Funny enough, D, you're right. Am I what? Don't don't play with me, Chris. I'm not playing with you. He he is playing a dude that ain't up to no good in that show. So, well, of course, man, that whole show makes the church look bad or accurate. Or both. I don't know. Whichever, whichever floats your boat. Depending on which church you go to. <laughs> it's like this. Like, do you hate church? Well, it's perfect. Do you love God? Do you love church? Well, it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect for everybody. Perfect for it's the kids. Everybody. It's everybody's image of, of, of an African-American church. Yeah. Scandal. <laughs> minus minus the children fucking. Um, Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> wow. Yo. God freaking dang it. What? Brian Bosworth. Brian Bosworth was a rebel in NCAA pro uh and, and NCAA protester when starring at Oklahoma. But he disagrees with Colin Kaepernick's anthem protest. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I told you it was gonna happen. I was like, yeah, and there no, we go. And Chris, and do you wanna know what makes it better? What do you wanna know what makes that all better? Uh-huh. It's on the show Speak for Yourself. He's on that show with that fucking brown turd that pimple on the ass of black people jason goddamn whitlock i'm sick of him <sighs> so being said brian bosworth i'm not sad that you disagree with colin kaepernick hell to be honest with you i don't care what your affiliation is with anything you're you're a good christian man as long as you don't spread no just ignorant shit around Fine, I have no problem with you. But, but see, that with the, but see, with said, that though, but guess I, what, Chris? But guess what, Chris? Because you know why I don't care. I didn't. You were never a hero to me. But you know what? Cool white guy. Whatever. <laughs> Go, Bo Jackson. <laughs> no, but look, that's why Bo Jackson took your ankles and your whole career. You just said, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going into Hollywood. And you fucked up on that. Hey, so, hey, hey, but you know what? He's such a good sport that he popped up in that Bo, that Bo Jackson Tecmo Bowl car commercial. That was funny. Now, that was funny. That was a legit. That was legit funny. We didn't mention that. That was funny. I get him. He was a good sport about it. He's like, all right, cool, fine, you know. But hey, 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 hey. At least I know Boz would be like, what are you talking about? I love the blacks. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I love the black. But anyways, FBI basically says, "Hey, you know, it'd be a damn shame if you basically don't work for six months if you don't do this thing." So he ends up hey, doing it. And no, um, no way. The blackmail goes like this: so You know that three weeks, like no three weeks suspension that you were on. Uh, that just turned into six months. This is blackmail. We're the FBI. We don't believe in blackmail. Yeah, we just believe in covering things up and not helping the Negroes. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm a hurt Negro. Me. What am I talking about here? <laughs> that hurt me a little bit. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. That hurt me kind of a little bit when I said. That. No, no, oh. I'm pretty sure so, that was probably if they said that it'd be a pause from Gant. Like, no, nah, uh, Gant, hurt, Gant hurt a little been, bit. Ah, <laughs> uh, Gant would have been just like Eris's boy off of Chappelle show. Fucking right. <laughs> 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 Shout outs to Anthony Barry. So the question is this. So the question is, what's he going undercover for? We got to take down this biker gang. But before we do, th- before we do that, can we and eight and talk- shit? Like before we do that, can we talk about his uh, Son of chaos? Like, before we do that, can we talk about Brian's partner? Um, so his partner, not not Sylvester Stallone, is in this movie. Yeah, 
Yeah, his, his partner. If you've seen him before, he's always playing that guy, Sam McMurray. Um, if you ever watched Raising Arizona, he was in that movie and stuff. He played like the dick hole to fucking Nick Cage and stuff. Then Nick Cage punched. I don't know if you guys watched that movie. Just putting it out there. That's the first thing Dude, I remember. It was Raising Arizona. If nobody's seen it, I hate to be that person. I mean, I'm going to actually, no. It's Raising Arizona. If you haven't watched that movie, go check it out. Trust me, you won't be you won't be upset. It's a Coen Brothers movie. It's really good. I would also like to point out that uh, that he is trying his he is trying his damnedest to blend in at a biker gang bar. First off, you should have known something was up when when he meets up with Huff. Huff got on a fucking thong. But he's a man, so nobody's questioning his manliness. Boy, it? Boy. No, that, that hold up, that nineteen ninety one speedo. <laughs> nah, you said it wrong. That nineteen ninety one banana hammock. Banana hammock. <laughs> but to show he's man, he sits on his bed and there's a fucking butt ass naked chick with the tits popping out in his bed, and he's all like, "Whoa, whoa tits, whoa, whoa, whoa." All right, all right. You know what? It's time for three black geeks to get a little bit bamish. Hey, Eris. My mm-hmm. rating on all the breasts I saw in this movie is this. <clears throat> the milk's gone bad. <laughs> uh, what about, wait a minute, hold on. What about the one that, uh, what about the one that was playing pool? Okay, mm. okay. okay. Mm. They, were, they were a good saggy. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yo, yo, see, they got weight on it. Yeah, I can deal with that. That I can deal with. All the rest of these chicks, <laughs> All the rest of them are mosquito bites and girls that like, I think I want to get this. I got to be honest, man. I was waiting for the one token black chick to be in there, and I didn't get that. I'm sorry, Chris. Chris, you said I'm waiting for the one token black chick. Nigga, did you not notice all the Confederate flags? But I'm just saying, dude, you know in those situations, there's at least one token black woman that's just all going along with it because reasons. You know what? You know, no, you know what, uh, D? CJ actually does have a point where you're going to have that one guy. The one guy that's part of the brotherhood. He just happens to have that one black woman that he convinced that he really loves that brown sugar. Yo, and she got, like, no self-respect for herself. And she just, like, she just dead. You know, it's like... <laughs> You know what? It makes me laugh. You know how what white people say, no, this flag represents freedom. It represents my heritage. And a, and I remember a black person saying, no, that's a keep out sign to us. And he was like, no, it doesn't. This means that we're brother. I'm like, hey, son, son, when in the history of there's a whole bunch of Confederate flags for waving in the air and shit were black people invited. Exactly. Ever in the history of America. When does that ever happen? Now, I'm not talking about when black people like will wave a Confederate flag or have like a shirt with Confederate flag on there for to be ironic or nothing like that. I ain't talking about that. No, I'm talking when it's when it's fucking Skinner playing in the background and there's motorcycles everywhere. <laughs> I'm talking about that, <laughs> like that kind of crap, man. Uh-uh. But I mean, yeah. But like I said, when we say it's the whitest movie. The the crux is like this. Um, so the aces and eights got a fucking guy <laughs> who it's basically <laughs> who basically was such a piece of shit white dude that he killed a fucking priest and got sentenced in court and thought so his life. How did you like that? Oh, really, first of all, I felt bad, man. Why did y'all have to go and kill Father Willem Dafoe? No bullshit, <laughs> man. Yo, what was the best part about that? The, the fact that homie just walked into church with a shotgun and nobody stopped him, nobody yelled or nothing, or B, when the when the priest knew the gun was on him and he had that oh shit look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> nobody. The, my thing is like, so homie just walked up in the motherfucking piece, just like, he just pulled up at that junk, buck, buck, and rolled out. So, <laughs> Joe, but whatever. Man. I mean, but it's like the way, because it's so abrupt. He just pops up out of nowhere and just, poof. I'm like, what the fuck? So, basically, you have this, you have the um, uh, the district attorney. Um, his name is Whippleman, right? Or yeah, Whippleman. Whippleman. Whippleman, whatever. His nickname is Whip. Yeah. And he's like, we're going to make sure that this degenerate goes to jail and take the death penalty. Yeah. Nobody does that to anybody here in the state of Mississippi. Sir, sir, I have a question. What about that black church that burned down last week? Uh, we, we'll get to that when we get to it, I guess. Whatever. Po- now, my policy, should you vote for me, I will bring back <laughs> death. 
<laughs> I'll bring back the death penalty. Sir, sir, what about the ongoing investigation with those five black children that died mysteriously by the Ku Klux Klan? We found no evidence, and I think the Ku Klux Klan are good people. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, but like... And if it were up to me, this case would already be closed. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Because my thing is this. It's like... The fact that there's, like, look, I'm not going to say that no group can ever be organized, but for a bunch of, like, Lance Higgerson and Forsyth seem to be the only two people that, that really got their head straight. I cannot buy this group of people are that organized. They got to go through all this just for one dude. I'm like, yo, two tears in the bucket and fucking move on. He killed a priest. Get over Son. it, man. Son, that's where y'all fucked up at. Because real talk, love you to death. Look, look, love both of y'all to death. We had an army of people, right? And let's just, just let's be real. Chris goes to jail for shooting a priest in the face. You know what would be the first words to come out of my mouth? I'm like, yo, damn, that's fucked up. We ain't getting that nigga all here. Nah, nah, he gone. <laughs> and you know what? I can't even be mad. It's like, well, hey, 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 y'all did the right thing. <laughs> No, here's here's Harris. Here's Harris. I, mean, look, I mean, look, I could put like, look, I could put a file inside of a cake, but that's just way too damn obvious and too fucking. <laughs> hey, like, that's too, like, hold on, that's way too obvious and too damn funny. Like, here's like, here's this. You know what I do? No, no. So, so what we gonna do? Here's Harris. I get us. I give him some Jordans on the inside. Yeah, man. I mean, I can get him. You know, we can make sure his, you know, his his commissary is like filled, you know, filled up, man. We we gonna hook him up like that, man. You know what I mean? You know, like, 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 when y'all gonna get me out? Oh, homie, damn, nigga. Why you pressing us? <laughs> you asking for a lot. You, you getting the death penalty, Chris. You're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, look, nobody told you to walk up in that church with an AR. <laughs> it's too just soon, because, though. AR-15, like, goddamn. Like, no one told you to go in there with an AR-15 just because you got mad at the post office. I'm like, yo, Chris, I told you, number one, that was a too big of a gun to be going in there and dumping it off. Number two, why? I think, like, why, man? You could have just, like, shot his car up. It would have made the same exact sense. Actually, that's the funny thing. We never got an explanation of why the biker killed the fucking priest in cold blood during a baptism. Because he's no a way. crazy white guy. That's all you really need to know. You know what? I, that's the thing. Like no. I said, it makes no sense why they would do that. No, guys, anytime that you got to ask a question about why this gang did anything, the answer's simple. Because the brotherhood. Yeah. Because the brotherhood. You're right about that, Eric. See, if it was a black dude, there will be like a long, there will be literally a two-paragraph reason, and we're just sitting there nodding like, oh, if he had to do it, he had to do it. With this boy in tow, rips off his sh- you know, shoulder pads, off his little Jack jean jacket and stuff, puts his hat cap on backwards, and they roll into the bar. I love how McMurphy says, hey, can you give me another glass? This one is stained. <laughs> I'll be getting shot in the face on that shit. So, basically, uh, Huff is there to kind of, like, make his presence known and stuff. And Forsyth, being who he is, off the break, smells something's up with him. We get into a little bar fight. Huff is kind of, like, proving his worth and stuff. Uh, I love the line. It's actually, in my opinion, the best line of the whole movie. <laughs> Where William Forsyth gets up and tells him to leave, right? He said, yeah, you got a real pretty face. Let me fuck it up for you. I was like, that's actually a good line. <laughs> oh, well, first of all, Forsyth speaks in one-liners. Yes, he does. He speaks this in whole- intensity. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, he speaks in very intense one-liners. Well, my other favorite one-liner, hey, man, we just won our $1,000 and we'll be gone. I got good news for you, baby. You're already gone. Kicked to the nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, when there was what actually it was in the scene of the bar where him and Bob, Boz get face to face, right? Yeah. And you know, Forsyth is looking all crazy. Right there, I was like, stairs and crank. <laughs> <laughs> no bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, man, I love William Forsyth. That guy has just been everywhere, and you know, when he's in a movie, you're going to get some intensity out of his ass. Yo, yo, it's funny that we were talking about uh oh God, this whole week I've been talking about Stephen Baldwin. We were talking about how Stephen Baldwin went from uh, freaking crazy as hell, uh stoner, just goofy and uh, sometimes maniac Stephen Baldwin. Now he's like like, you know, a uh, 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 button up shirt um proper conservative. I really think my my brother Alec is disrespecting Donald Trump. <laughs> 
<laughs> done that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Again, I swear, you know what? I'm about to do that now. If I look up William Forsythe, and he's like the biggest conservative in the world. I do not understand white people for the rest of my life. No, but I forgot who <laughs> I said it. Don't. I already don't, but still. If I forgot who said it, I don't know which actor or actress said it, but somebody was like, if you have Forsythe as the bad guy to your character's hero, you have your work cut out for you because you're going to get some rawness out of Forsythe when he's yeah. a villain. <laughs> Yeah, Forsyth, for whatever reason, man, is just a really, really good... He's really good at being a villain, man. I mean, look, I loved him in Dick Tracy. I was like, oh, shit, it is him in Dick Tracy, because you could get... Even with the makeup, I'm like, that's Forsyth. I could see that intensity throughout the makeup. He was fucking flat top. <laughs> he was flat top. I was like, oh, yeah, that, that that's Forsyth. That's obvious. He He's definitely chewing the scenery easily in that. I was like, yeah, you know, it was cool. Funny enough... We were going to do another movie, this movie, before um, Sue it, Sue pulled a, um, gave us a better movie. We were going to do Firestorm, and he was in that movie as a villain. Yeah, yeah, and that threw me off. I'm like, yo, so you mean to tell me that Forsyth was been, has been in two, we we did two Forsyth movies in a row. Actually, and that would be our third Forsyth movie if we did it, because Forsyth was actually in Blue Streak. So oh, we shit, have, this is the wow. You're right. This is the third one. God damn, I'm tripping. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Bl- Stone Cold is the third one. So we did the substitute, Blue Streak, and now I this. Wow, shit. You're right. Wow. So yeah, like I said, look, look, dude. We're trying our best to cover all the character actors as much as possible, man. We we try our best. On now that. I will we, say this though. Um, did you like him in Boardwalk Empire? Before we move on, did you like Forsyth in Boardwalk uh, Empire? I look, I watched Boardwalk Empire. I haven't watched all of it, so I cannot answer that for you. He was I really just, good. I liked him. I liked him in Boardwalk. I, I just I, I remember I you told me you watched it. I didn't know if you actually how far into it you watched it. So. Uh, to the second I can't, answer, I can't answer that either because uh, I barely watched it myself. He was good and justified, though, too. Yeah. I mean, but that's to be expected, though. It's justified. No, no, no. Chris, Chris, we understand. Much like Queen Sugar, you ride the cock of that show. I understand that, man. <laughs> hey, that hey, is- hey, hey. No. Anytime I get to see Walter Goggins be racist as shit, I'm, I'm there for it. I'm, I'm 100% there for it. Which is, you know what? I don't know why I haven't watched that then, CJ. I don't know why you haven't. That, that show was fucking ridiculously good. I don't know why. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I like how both of y'all reacted to the to the racism of Goggins. Like, oh my god, I gotta watch it. Dude, he plays a fucking white supremacist to fuck. Come on. Come on. What did you expect him to do? Be somebody that's even-tempered? Come on. He's, he's like opposite to fucking Tim- Timothy Olin Fantastic in that fucking show. I'm like, ah, all right, cool, fine. Hey, you you want to respect Olafont, man? You're gonna have to respect his 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 work. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't stop. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm lying to myself. Hey, look, I gotta be real. I think Justified is his best thing that he's done and stuff. But it's like, dude, but actually, Olafont wasn't bad before they canceled the show. Oliphant wasn't bad in Deadwood. Yeah, he was good in Deadwood. I, I will he give him that. He wasn't bad. I wonder he was a... Look, I think he, he was dry, but he was purposely dry because he was supposed to be a sheriff and all upstanding and yada, yada, yada. But don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to talk about Oliphant later on in the summer of America when we do Live Free or Die Hard. Oh, <laughs> yeah. America. America. Anyway, now... <laughs> Speaking of America... <laughs> let's, go on, let's go to Sturgis... If Sturgis had sex with Disney World, and what would that baby look like? Listen, that's what their clubhouse. Listen, is. first of all, there's Nazi flags. There are two Oof. chicks just showering in in public. Cool, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you see a baby, a kid pushing a baby stroller, and another family walking by. And I'm just saying to myself, white people. <laughs> now, I have to ask you this though. Uh, did you get a kick out of Huff fighting uh, Kenny Omega? Basically, nigga. <laughs> and said the same day we were looking at that. We were looking at this. Like, Angel, like, is that Kenny? I was like, is that Kenny Omega? She's like, thank you. <laughs> yo, I saw it. I was like, yo, did Kenny Omega travel back in time and just pop up in this movie? <laughs> nah. All right. First off, Kenny Omega is Canadian, so I can't make no weird connection of that being his I cousin. Hate black people, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Remember, he's Canadian. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're all leaving up here, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, uh, we all see each other as who we are. <laughs> I did want to point out. I did want to point out something else. Um, when he had to get into that, uh, <laughs> when he went through pit fighter, as, as I would call it, yeah, pit fighter. <laughs> That's what I that was. Pit fighter. That was yeah, literally. That was literally pit fighter. When he was, okay, he, yeah, fuck him over. I'm like, fuck him over. <laughs> now, now, now he's inside. Now he's inside uh, doing pit fighter, right? Um, I love the continuity error. <laughs> Man, who are you kidding? Like what one minute pregnant at one point. No, one dude had on a vest and he's taking the punches. <laughs> like, I mean, he's literally eating those punches. Like, bruh, please tell me this is not the best that you can do. Oh yeah, and, air. Hey, hey, Chris, and Andrew said, it is Kitty Omega. He's not selling the punches. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so wait, hold on. So he's eating the punches. <laughs> hold on, hold on. So he's eating the punches, right? He's eating the punches. And then as soon as he lifts him up, I'm like, bro, what happened to your vest? Yo, what happened to have that shit, man? It's like, this dude could... Now, here's the funny thing. All right, so... Why is Kenny Omega not highly uh, on a higher rank in that in that club? Because he looks like he can. Yo, why is he not like a permanent goon? Now, here's now that being said, there, uh, Chris, you was talking about that was Kenny Omega and all that. How much you want to bet that guy was actually a wrestler? Man, now, if I find that guy's himself. name, bet, no, here's, an, here's an even better question for you. How many how many people in this movie were actually wrestlers? That's 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 the main question. Out of all the bikers that you actually see in this movie, how many of y'all are actually wrestlers? And I'm talking, we're talking like C to D tier wrestlers for the WWF. I do you one better. How many of them were on WMAC Masters? Boom. Oh yes, and I got a joke for the, and I got a joke for that for our next movie. <laughs> oh God. All I'm saying is this. Apparently, it's enough to catch Lance Henriksen's character's uh, attention because he just rolls up in his van. To which I'm like, only white people can do that to white people because if that was a black guy, he would have got fucking knifed. Yo, I mean, he was like, you just sitting in his backseat like, yo, what's up, homie? <laughs> first, like, first of all, like, for, like, first of all, here's two, like, first of all, there's two things I want to point out. One, I'm sorry, three things. One, uh, why is my like, why is your chick going through my stuff? Number two, uh, I didn't expect to walk up in here and see Jack from Breaking Bad go back in time and run into a younger <laughs> person of a sudden. Nigga. And three, like, and three, hold up. It's 1991. Dude, shouldn't you be, like the dude that was next to him, shouldn't you be at a bar getting ready to give your clothes to the Terminator? <laughs> no bullshit. <laughs> Yo, here's my final one. Hey, Lance, you're 41. Button your shirt up. Button your fucking shirt up, Lance. <laughs> see if we tell that. See if we tell that to black older black guys that got their taco meat hanging out. I'm looking at Lance like, hey, dog, you don't have a six pack. You might want to button that shirt up a little bit. All right, now now to Lance's credit, he was cut for Lance Henderson. For Lance Henderson, he was cut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he actually wasn't looking too bad. It was like, all right, it's not bad. Oh man, my nigga, my nigga had a little had, had the little had had the had the four pack rolling, not the six, the four pack. <laughs> Which is That's enough weird. for a person of his age, you know. You know what I mean? That. That's where it's like the top two, one in the middle, and like one on the bottom. <laughs> it's yeah, enough, it's enough to tell. It's enough to tell these young kids. I mean, business. <laughs> now, I want everybody to take to to hear this right now. I want everybody to understand this. Um, the girl in the movie, okay. I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit with her only on one thing. Yes, she gets with Bosworth. But here's the thing. They only had about six lines of dialogue with each other before they say, oh, my God, you're going to be the guy that whisked me away out of here. Trust me. There's no need for us to even go into it. His old lady, his old lady <laughs> basically, basically is a prototypical Wait a minute, I'm with the bad guy. But wait a minute, you treated me with respect. Oh, I just always wanted to leave. Well, you let's be real. All you. it all it took was from saying, Yeah, first off, that's this this whole thing of uh us having sex ain't happening because you know, if you were a real woman, you know, you wouldn't hook up with me and stuff, and you know, your guy doesn't treat you with respect because you know, you don't just sit there and pass around your wife and stuff. I'm sorry, wife, nigga. This is a biker gang. You mean old lady. <laughs> old lady. <laughs> Lady. Use the proper term, sir. <laughs> Forgot, old lady. You know, so here's their plan. There, this, this is the biker gang's plan in a nutshell. 
And 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 to be fair, this is like this is also almost like the Ku Klux Klan plan to pretty much any white militia or white people that really need to just put down guns. Yeah. Plan. So basically, I, they have a former army person that has inside connection to know where the army supplies their drop off they drop off their supplies. Of the plan yeah. is to basically take military guns. And roll up to the fucking am, uh, roll up to the courthouse and just shoot up the whole fucking place in order to free their boy. Sounds sound to me. Sounds sound to me. Now, what does Bosworth's role play plays in all this? Well, Bosworth knows he's still undercover, so he basically tells Lance <laughs> and he can sell him the ingredients to make a whole bunch of crank. And he's like, hell the fuck yes. But at the same time, William Forsythe, because I just got to be honest with you, I may be crazy, I may be high, but that nigga, that cop, knows <laughs> things is going down. <laughs> Yo, I got to give this. I will say I will give points to, I like, okay, points to Forsythe's character for change because most, like, henchmen, they usually give up on the idea that the person is a cop, like, Five minutes after meeting him, Forsyth's character stuck to it the whole fucking movie. Like, I know this motherfucker's a pig. Can't tell. You, I don't know how, but I know he's a ice, pig. Ice. I don't know what. Like, I don't know what you see in the mice, but I know. He, I know something's going down with him. And Lance Henderson, because just to be honest with you, Lance is equally high through this whole movie too. He Lance has this chuckle. <laughs> he and there's a continuity laugh. I mean, continuity thing with his laugh also because they cut in one of his laughs from earlier later on in the movie. I don't know if it, either of you ca- caught that, but there was like one scene where I was like, wait a minute, that was a scene all the way in the beginning of the movie. Why'd you play that again? Oh, but, also, also, if you chugged a beer, or chug, ch- take a shot every time you saw mullets, you'd die of alcohol poisoning in this movie. Oh, movie. God. Dude, there's, you wouldn't survive. There's no point. Why would you want to be cruel like that, man? I'm just saying, there was so many mullets flying around. I was like, Jesus Christ, there's a lot of mullets. So, all right. So here's another thing. There's another subplot. To, to prove that Boz is on their side and all this, all the rest of that, uh, apparently, and this is going to sound stupid even coming out of my mouth, apparently, the mob is in Mississippi. It's not shocking, but no, 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 no. Chris, Chris, the mob being in Miami, I believe it. The mob being in Chicago, a, I believe it. The mob being in New Jersey, a, I believe it. The mob being in Mississippi, <laughs> what y'all doing down there? What y'all get lost? <laughs> like, I mean, uh, I could only uh, assume they felt money to, was to be had down there. I mean, maybe uh, Are y'all trying to. T- Hold on, y'all trying to take a page from Sonny Ferrelli and just move down south? I mean... But you, but you don't want to go too far down south, so you don't go to Florida. Instead, you go to Mississippi. Which is the, which I like to call the deep south. Or, and, uh, look, uh, look, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, you went, you went over to Mississippi. Or as I like to call it, we don't read south. <laughs> <laughs> Spell south. S-O-U-F. South. <laughs> I'm sorry. You mean C-F-O-F. <laughs> <laughs> exclamation point X. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how to ride either. <laughs> now, can I, now, guys, can I point out something with uh, like, oh, God, this this piece, not even peace offering, this present he decides to give to uh, like to give to Chains. That's that's the leader of the game. Uh, like his name's Chains. He, he gives him not just any bulletproof vest, a government issued bulletproof vest. And to give Boss his credit, he's like he was like. Like, huh, this is a government issue. And Boss says, yeah, like, just yeah. Like every like, gun in here. No, not even just like every gun. He's like, like just like 90% of my stash is actually government issue. Just like every other pistol in this room is government issue. And know. again, Lance Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold up, real, hold up. Let me get some crank real quick. <laughs> okay, now look, why don't you turn that? Like, look, try it on. Now turn around. <laughs> <laughs> pulls out a pistol just to test it out. Seems like it works. Yo, and he did that. And of course, he um he fights chains and all that. And Forsyth is like this. I knew it. <laughs> I get up, but it's like nah, nah. Let him live. We can use him. He could be a part of us. <laughs> he's on the brotherhood. 
Now, so, they, now, to give him that credit, they don't give him colors or nothing like that, man, but he's a part of them, I guess. So basically, he's, 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 a, still, on a, he's still an outsider. Yeah. So what ends up happening is he wants them to do a job. So essentially what they do is they take this uh, this Latin gang guy, take a picture of the spider thing inside of his ear. They get a dead body, take the ear off that, and have a tattoo artist put that on there. They take the earrings and he gives it the uh, chains and was like, I did your job for you. He's done. Quite an elaborate plan considering he had to drive all the way to freaking Pensacola. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I got why they why they went through all that, but a part of me is like, <laughs> we're like, I know he got a call from one of the detectives, like Huff, like Huff. You know that whole little stunt you just did coming to Pensacola? Yeah, you know that cost the department twenty thousand dollars. It's the FBI. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Bill, just let you know. <laughs> just let you know. <laughs> so he does the job. Curry's favorite man work. hours. That was man hours you waste. Is what I'm trying to say. So he does the job. I did like how he like how he snatched up uh, like the Latino guy, right? He snatches him up. He tells him, "Don't fuck with me, man. Seriously, don't fuck with me." Now, as he's getting arrested, all he kept saying was, "It goes around. It goes around, homie. It goes around." <laughs> Car. So pay attention to that line because it's gonna come back later. So basically. Chains gives him a job. Hey, we're going to go collect this money. Make sure it happens. And that's when we find out that the Italian Mafia are in Mississippi too. Which one of the greatest scenes ever to be shown happens. One of the gang members is arguing with his girlfriend, who's a prostitute. And they're arguing about money. He's in front of, um, he's in front of wherever, you know, wherever they're at. He gives her money, you know, after their little argument. She runs upstairs, right? Coming down the street, and a crown vic is the mob. And a dude takes out a grenade. He said, hey, and he throws the grenade at him. And to get the- <laughs> I just want to know. I had asked Angie asked the best question. So he saw the grenade get thrown at him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just it was one of those like slow motion things. It's like you had to have known. Okay, whatever. Funny thing about that guy is he's been in a lot of movies, particularly like Mad Max, and he was also in the bodyguard as the guy that like was stalking Whitney Houston and shit. So he Wait, what, what the skit what the dude that got 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 uh got um uh, grenade to death. Yeah, basically. Actually, hold on. Dude lives by the way. Yeah, which <laughs> here's the thing about him. I, I'm jumping ahead on this one because it's probably the funniest part. So he lives, they're visiting him in the hospital, right? They literally forced this poor woman to marry him. No, the best part about it, no, it was so funny. The gay rolls up in there, knocking over nurses and, and pushing like patients out the way to get to his room. They're like, hey, how you doing? All that loud shit. They oh, throw a big ass Domino's pizza on his lap. <laughs> like, this one, it's like, really? That's what we're doing right now? Yo, and Lance Henderson's over there like, hey, 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 your old lady, she's going to marry you. <laughs> and my man, whose whole face at this point looked like Martin when he got stomped out that one time. <laughs> see, 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 you being nice, D. I was going to say he looks like fucking uh, the dude that Rick, the Dick Cheney shot in the face. I don't know why we even said that. No, 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 no. He looks like freaking Two-Face if all of the face got burnt. That's what it looks like. It's like, Harvey, are you all right? <laughs> Either way, really, bro, bro, he was looking rough. And, what, and, you know, when they were going to the hospital just, like, pushing people out of the way, snatching stuff and all that shit, I thought it was, what I thought was hilarious was uh, was change just snatched, like, uh, like, snatched a bouquet of flowers just to walk in the room. Oh my I'm like, god! I'm like, was there any purpose of that? But anyway, so change. Um, so so we end up finding out. So change decides just to give Forsyth peace of mind. He has an insider that's in the police department that can look up Joe Huff. <laughs> hey, look, look. Actually, no. They went by hold his. On. They went by now, his um gang name. Now hold on. Oh, I John Stone. My bad. Yeah, John, John Stone. Stone. He's like, I need it. Yeah, he's like, I need that yesterday. I'm like, oh shit. So, so I thought she was going to get it back. No, it, it, time went by. So Lance's old lady, Ch- Ch- Chains' old lady, picks up the phone when she calls. Whoa, it whoa, was, whoa! That's later in the movie. That's later in the movie. Uh, hold on. Did I really go? Did I really just jump ahead that quick? 
Oh yeah. my God, Chris! This intricate plot needs a fucking. Any, yeah, you're, yeah, you know going, what the intricate right? plot was? Them at a table with the fucking mob, fucking no neck mob dude is standing next to fucking John J- Huff, and I'm like, okay, this is interesting, you know. And um, apparently, the bikers getting to really show that they that they ain't gonna take no shit from the mob. Uh, they got one of the mobsters inside. They they cut his head off, basically. Yo. They cut his head off and put it inside of a uh, a motorcycle helmet. Yeah. And Hello? I have to be honest I, with you, that was kind of funny. Yeah. No, that was hilarious because he told him, hey, go ahead and open it. Open the lid. He opens the visor and all you see is the eyes looking to the left. <laughs> hey, you see what the, hey, you see what these buggies did to me? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ain't gonna happen again. Uh, you, know, you know what I was waiting for? You know what I was really waiting for? Just to, like just for the sake of comedy. I wanted him to look at just I wanted him to look at him and be like, look what they did to my head, man. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, they took my head. <laughs> so here's the deal. So Forsyth has a little conversation with Chains, basically still expressing, I don't know why you trust this guy. I don't like him. So Forsyth decides he's going to follow. That was like six of those conversations. I know. But this is the this is the last one though. This is him this still is the last trying to. Con- he's still trying to convince Chains that he of his like uneasiness. But Chains is looking at him like, "What's your deal, man? I already called the people. Chill." But Forsyth ain't having it, so he's following. He follows Huff. Huff meets up with his partner. They're having a conversation, and his partner was like, "Hey, look." Um, the FBI didn't expect you to be crossing the state lines, kind of out of your jurisdiction. So we're going to have to pull you. And then that's when Huff turned into the SpongeBob meme. Mm, we're gonna have to pull you. <laughs> well, isn't it your call? Why don't you go up here? So, They're like, come on, Joe. You know I can't do that. Yes, you can. So look, do you want to uh, look? Do you want to get this case cracked or not? Yeah. So what ends up happening is um, after, after that, after that whole thing and stuff. Actually, prior to that, um, homegirl's old lady. She had picked up the phone. Actually, that was the funny thing. So yeah. no 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 it's after it my bad no, no, sorry no, I'm getting mixed up I'm getting mixed up I'm getting it mixed up just go ahead and say it no, it doesn't it doesn't trip over nothing man. no no but I'm getting it mixed up because before then they were at a party and she's pulling that whole will they or won't they shit where she was like you treat me so nice but I don't know if I can leave the gang oh my god it, of course and of course it doesn't take much whatever he's like he's like shit like he says very very quick like you know like, you're better than this you know. This whole gang doesn't fit you. And I'm thinking like, wait, 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 wait. So the outsider tells you that you're more than what you are. <laughs> and you automatically just like, oh my gosh. So like, does she kiss him? Yeah, she does. Here's, <laughs> when he did that, when she kissed him, here's me. Hey, yo, um, hey, yo Huff. <laughs> you know for a fact she went down on Henderson last, like, hours ago, right? <laughs> I mean, when he kissed her, the only thing I was waiting for is the song, I want to know what love is. That's why I was waiting for like a, a fucking, <laughs> or either that or I was gonna say throw out some throw out a random white snake song. I know, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, like I said, back to him meeting up with his partner Bruce and stuff. Bruce has his store, <laughs> <laughs> just like no. every night has uh, his own. Oh. Wait, no, wait, throw out the other one. Is this love? Doom, doom, that doom. Thing? Get your 80s power balance at Columbia House. <laughs> oh, oh, it's it's kind of funny because later on, look, because later on in the movie, oh, he had glasses on. It was nighttime. Here's me. I wear my sunglasses at night. So I- <laughs> real, real talk, before we go back into it, you know how everybody uh, uh, during the uh, 2000s where – it was that weird emo punk um, wave that hit rock and roll where yeah. new metal was leaving and all the rest of that. Mm-hmm. And we had a lot of the older bands, not the new metal bands. Like Stone Temple Pilots and shit. Yeah, but we had the older bands who were kind of bitter because they weren't making money no more. They was like, that's not real rock, rock and roll. Like, yeah, we used to listen to White Snake and this and that and all that. They didn't have no pussy song. I was like, yo. Are you serious? You know how many rock ballads existed in the eighties? You guys were homos. Like what? What? It was like this. Here's me. None of you were banging a girl out to a freaking Anthrax song. No, you were. <laughs> you turned on one of those rock ballads where it was like, 
Every time I'm on the road, I think of you. I'm like, get out of my face. Half of y'all like Bon Jovi. I don't want to hear <laughs> nothing. Slippery when wet. Real talk. And I'm just being my honest stuff. And I did kind of give them a hard time because they're because real talk, their their songs are kind of kind of fucking lit. Um I gave Fallout Boy so much shit, but they were no worse than those bands in the eighties. Okay, so, hey, hey, so, I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I like Fallout Boy. I ain't gonna lie. Yo, their last album, I gotta be real. I'm so mad. I I shitted on them all through the two thousands. <laughs> it happens. Really, yeah. it, it happens. I, it happens. D. Look, it happens. It look, happens. Look, 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 D. You're the one that I sat that sat there and got me listening to Migos. Yes, the beats are good, but you had me in the Migos before. I was like, man, fuck the Migos. And all of a sudden, he's like, hey, Chris, look, listen to this beat. God damn it, this shit's hot. God Yo, damn it, it's hot. And then, um, no, but it's it's kind of sad. My wife, you know what really did it for me? You know what really did it for me? It wasn't my wife. My wife listened to all that. She wasn't a fan of Fallout Boy. She was more of My Chemical Romance, which I love them. Yeah, I like them, but, too. But the, one, but the one thing that got me like a Fallout Boy was actually one of the greatest songs ever sang on Robot Chicken. By Patrick, by Patrick um, Stump, uh, he had said the best song av- ever. Blue rabbits fucking <laughs> <laughs> nigga. Blue rabbits yeah. fucking is the best oh, fucking song God. ever. Yo, and I was like, I was like, who is that? My and my and Angie was like, oh, that's the lead singer for Fallout Boy. Bull crap. And I listened to this dude. Real talk, that nigga can sing. That little white boy can sing his butt off, Dude, man. Dude, the <laughs> fucking rapping and stuff, I was like, yo, yo, and, this is so awesome. And it made me laugh because uh, recently they did that all. Uh, they did that all. Uh, uh, Night, Night Begins to Shine, that junk for um, uh, Teen Titans Go. Yeah. And then I started singing that song. I like, yo, Patrick, bring it in, dog. <laughs> <laughs> It, dude, it ain't that serious, man. He was going for it. So, him and CeeLo. I'm like, I bet him and CeeLo are in the booth right now singing this song. They're going a little bit overboard. Bring it in, guys. Come on now. It's a children's cartoon. <laughs> so so, so Huff meets up with this guy, and they had a conversation and stuff. And all of a sudden, we see Chains. Hey, Huff, you're a cop. Meet me back at the club. I'm like, okay, wow, Jesus. That's a little intense there, Forsyth. When they met up with the guardsmen. Like, hey, I want to see your papers. Okay. So he pulls out literal like literally small sheets of paper and starts tossing them at him and says, Hey, how about these papers? Pulls out a gun, they kidnap the guys, <laughs> take them back to the like take them back to the hideout, make wooden caskets for them, and he proceeds to shoot them, kills them in cold blood, and now your boy Ice has a conscience. Hey man, this this isn't right, eh? I mean the brotherhood, we're all about doing things, man. We're all about, you know, we we ride together. We live for each other, and we even die for one another. But killing the cold blood, man, it's just he like says, good look, man. Yeah, says that bike chase scene. He shoots a guy. He shoots a cop in the fucking damn face, and the cop car explodes. Yeah, he <laughs> totally loves the fucking innocent people. Yo, yo, he had no. Now, now, hold on, now, hold on. The next, everywhere, now, man. Now, hold on. The next thing that happened after that, uh, the old lady, she's she pulls the Michelle Michael. You're a murderer! You murdered a couple <laughs> Cancel that bitch. <laughs> he, oh my, and he totally did. He totally did give him the cancel that bitch. I'll buy another one because in comes Foresight being, being the, the great best friend slash best, <laughs> best right hand <laughs> man. You man lie. Where he comes and says, hey man, don't even worry about that. You want an old lady? You can have one of my best. <laughs> I'm like, yo... And I did, it, looked, it was so funny because the girl that got pushed over there, like, we were like, huh, huh, what, what? Oh, oh, God, I upgraded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that girl has been rolling on drugs for the last week and a half. <laughs> she won't remember the sex. <laughs> she won't remember she even, this. Like, oh, she don't even remember what day it is. <laughs> oh, man. She's like, one day I was in the Piggly Wiggly and I just ended up with this biker gang. I don't know what happened. Right up, right up, right up, right up Rick Ross's alley. But that really kills me because the one thing I had to ask was when they put him in those makeshift caskets and shot him and all that. Here's me. Um, hi, D D Shaw through by Geeks. Could you just shoot him where they were standing at? And to an, uh, here's an even better question. I understand you wanted to. I understand you wanted to torture Ice because he decided to have a conscience, but. Wouldn't that have fucked up your your bike by trying to run his hand through 
I guess the little uh, like whoa, whoa. it wasn't Blaze. Like he tried to run his hand through. Yeah, that was and that, that wasn't Ice. That was the other guy. That was the other oh, other guy. Sorry. Yeah, that was like yeah, it was the other guy that that kind of liked um Huff. That guy, he was, yeah, basically, it wasn't that he must. I don't think it was that. It was just more so we're going to, he grabbed his hand, they revved up that motor, and they were going to put his hands between the um the blades of the, um not even the blades of the um wheel, but yeah, the blades of the wheel. And I think just break his hand, man. I was like, yo, that's gruesome as hell. And I thought, but at the same time, I was thinking to myself, eh, I think he learned his lesson. <laughs> like that man learned his lesson right then and there. He's like, you ain't going to be playing that harmonica anymore. Like, so going back to what you said earlier, we get a chase through the Bankhead Tunnel. Yo, let me tell you something. This dude shot up a fucking cop car and exploded, one of many explosions. Then fucking nudges a damn guy in his poor car, and I thought that car was going to explode. Thankfully, it didn't. Oh, my goodness. But here's the part that didn't make no sense to me, though. You see Huff speed up in front of him. Now, the reason why this doesn't make no sense, okay, Forsyth has the gun. Why would you did expose your back to said gun? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Whatever. The script said he was going to be all right. So I guess he knew he was going to be all right. So he, they're doing all this. They're doing, you know, they're doing all this maneuvering through cars and all this. And wh- how does this end? Easy. A road rash move. All they <laughs> did is get right to <laughs> You know him. road rash. That awesome game. <laughs> Oh, I love Ro Rash. Anyway, yo, what happens? All all Huff did was kick him a little bit. Forsyth goes aside. Ah! He goes right into a car. The car explodes. He flies off. Let the me bike. stop you guys for a second here. All right, the logistics of a car instantly exploding on impact is very slim. Uh, no, you mean in the bike exploding the on bi- impact? Yo, the bike and car exploded at the same time. All right, I watched that scene multiple times for scientific purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yo, you know it's bad when GTA Five has a better sense of how cars actually explode than a movie in 1988. I mean, 1991. <laughs> Because when D, D put the video up, I wasn't even, I didn't get to that part of the movie. So when he did that part, I was like, the fuck was that? Then I'm watching it, I'm like, how does that work? Oh, no. You know what the best part about that was? You know what? I told myself. That was we, fucking Chicago wind from Black Dynamite. Like, ah. <laughs> Yo, here's the best part. When he did that, he kicked him over to him. When I said that, when he did that, I told myself, when he huffed, said this. Huff had to say this when he drove off. Yeah, to serve and protect. I saved the day. Meanwhile, a whole bunch of innocent people either got got maimed <laughs> or injured from all of that activity that just went down. Dude, his oh, machine run right. alone. Yo, when he sees Huff, he just put on the whole surprise, motherfucker. I'm like, okay, yeah. wow. Time he shot that gun off. I'm like, he all. I'm like, Forsyth killed at least five people. He had at the very least five people that were not. One on kid the- probably got killed. That's all I'm saying. Uh, they were, look, I hate to be dark about it. There was a kid playing on the playground. <laughs> I hate to be that dude. <laughs> so Forsyth does the whole I knew you were a cop. <laughs> oh. You know what? Thank so, you. Yeah, so basically after that whole little thing, um, homegirl gets the phone call from you know, from the cop chick, and she was like, "Yeah, um, yeah, John Stone, he goes under another alias, Joe Huff. Joe Huff, do you got that?" And she's like, "Yeah, sure." And basically, you can see in her face that she has a disapproving stare, but she ain't gonna tell Chains. Not yet, not yet. She's got that look like, "All right, what the hell is going on here?" Yeah. So, it's like, what the hell is really going on? Yeah, so we cut to that night, and uh, you know, Ice is getting a uh, a biker's send off. No, he's getting a brotherhood send off. A brotherhood send off. My bad, brotherhood. Um, <laughs> the lost and the damned. Viking. Yeah, Viking. The lost and the do. Anyway, <laughs> uh, nah, he's getting the Viking funeral, and Angie tells me like, "Wait a minute, so they're Vikings now?" I'm like, Angie, wait don't have no identity 
We all go to figure that shit out. White people from the South have no idea. Well, that's white people, period, dude. They don't want to be. I mean, let's be real about this. this. White people took Cinco de Mayo and turned into a holiday to get fucked up and drunk. Meanwhile, every Mexican is like, you realize this isn't, okay, whatever, white people. Do whatever. They don't want to be this. They don't want to be that. They don't represent that. Like, no, I'm I'm an American. And American, we do American things. Like, do a Viking funeral. What? No, no, wait, D, D. Proud to be American. But that ain't enough. Yeah, I know. I like I say, it was, Angie, it, it was so funny. Angie, I think Angie said on her brother, like, cultural appropriation. Like, yes, that's what it is. It really <laughs> it, is. It's, it's like, like Vikings funerals. Like, really? really? It's like, let's, let me get this shit straight. So y'all, y'all, y'all want to be Nazis, but at the same time, y'all believe in a pure race. So y'all believe in a pure race like Nazis, but you also want to be Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> it's like make white up your mind this is so confusing <laughs> white people can't be one thing but whatever but during that whole time I was thinking to myself like <laughs> the stare down that huff and the chains have during that one little part I was like just kill him just kill him chains you know he had something to do with this just kill him so anyway, that night they have all. They anyway. Um, Actually, that was more, that was more of. I know you had something to do with this. I just can't prove it. No, no, no. I knew you had something to do with this. Oh hell, I'm high. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we get to the deal. They basically like, hey, we're gonna get this guns and we're gonna make this deal and stuff. And um, you know what ends up happening is they end up having to shoot the trucker. Yeah, because no, uh, and it was they made it very obvious that the trucker was um working um undercover with Huff on the whole deal too. So because it, it had to happen to chemical. keep his cover intact. Yeah, because that's a lot of com- uh, chemical chemical to get. Just to be honest with you, so they set him yeah. up. But all that it's like all that just get a whole bunch of P two P. Yeah, which to be fair, it was a good it was a good charade because you think that he killed the cop. Turns out it was just a fake way to try to get. You know, to convince Chains that Huff was legit. The mob tries to sit there and go after the truck. They go to sit there and chase after the truck. Huff basically ends up shooting the the, 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 the um, trailer off of it and stuff. They get the guns back. When he shot the trailer off, they didn't get the guns back. <laughs> I mean, that trailer was destroyed at a gas station explosion. Homegirl ends up snitching out Huff, saying that he's a cop. Um, actually, she didn't. I thought she did snitch him out. Like, first of all, he didn't even say anything. Second of all, she had that look on her face like, what's really about to happen here? Because I really don't think that she told him. Remember, remember what I said earlier? Comes around, Holmes. Comes yeah, that's around. right. Homeboy, yeah. yeah, Homeboy comes back into town and fucks it up for him and stuff. And that's how Lance was like, hold up. I thought you said you killed this guy. Yeah, it's me, Cesar Valepario, man. <laughs> so Lance is like, you know, he meets up in the bar. And you already know what time it is because when you got two dudes standing next to you and stuff, you already know you're in trouble. And sure enough, he is in trouble. But not before Lance has to shoot his old lady in front of him. My, my, like first, my, like first he kills, like first he kills El Mariachi here. <laughs> <laughs> Second, see, I was, see, I was going to say Super Dandy. I was gonna say El Dandy or Super Cult uh, cult, uh Calo, but whatever. See, I was gonna say got, see, oh, yeah. I was gonna say Caesar Chavez and shit. So you know, <laughs> already said Caesar, already said Caesar off all of, of San Andreas. So yeah, you got me on that one. I mean, he kills him first, and then he kills the old lady. But before he kills the old lady, got he has to deliver a foresight esque one. I mean, liner, which is well, now I gotta kill. Like, no, he didn't even say I gotta kill the old lady. He just says. I gotta break your heart. Turns the gun on her, shoots her, and kills her. Now, of course, when I now, of course, at first I said she's dead because I had to look at it again. I'm like, oh yeah, she's gone. Yeah, you know. And Lance, in the middle of him doing that, he was trying to do his version of uh, Russian roulette, and I'm like, hey, Lance, that's one bullet, not three bullets. He straps a bomb to Huff, and they're flying on a helicopter. Which, meanwhile. D might know this. I don't know. Do you watch It's Always Sunny? Uh, yeah, I do. I watch okay, it you know Dennis's dad. That's the hell. That's the dude that was former military. Oh yeah. Oh damn. God, that is his dad. Yeah, the one that he's like, why are you harassing me, son? Why? <laughs> In typical hero fashion, Huff is like, fuck this shit. He gets to a fight. 
A movie helicopter. Actually, all right, get it right. Actually, let's get that right. Not Dennis's dad, Max dad. Max that was dad, Max my bad. Dad. Max dad. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. But um, no, nah, but yeah, they get into a fight in a helicopter. Now, meanwhile, on the ground, Lance Hendrickson <laughs> goes up to the courthouse on this big day. <laughs> he shaves his beard, shaves off his mullet. Let's just be real, everybody. That was a wig anyway. Takes off the wig <laughs> and walks into the old courthouse as a priest. Now, I did say one thing. Why would a priest be walking into this? You know what? Fuck it. The movie's almost over. <laughs> well, I like how the FBI saw him and then put two and two together because clean shaven. No, what I liked was what I liked was when he sat down and the dude who sat in front of like this like dude who sat in front of a um in front of chains, he recognized him. He looked and said, hmm Something real familiar about this dude. He's it's like, wait a minute. I recognize this guy. I already know. I know what I need. Like, this is where I'm going to make my move. Now, notice that when the dude sat down behind, I mean, he sat down in front of Chains, the look on his face was, oh, fuck. I think I just got made. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, Chains like, well, all right, don't worry. We have a helicopter and no air and no uh, local air support is going to take it down. No, but Even- here's the kicker, though. It's like, okay, so when Lance decides he's going to make his move, I like how he just goes so extra with his kills. It's like, dog, you emptied a clip in the back of the fucking damn prosecutor. He grabbed dude by the shoulder and said, this time we're going to make it real. And he unloads a clip into him. Dog, it's like, yo, are you that extra? God damn. He killed the dude from the docks. (laughs) He said, this time we're going to make it real. So he unloads on him and then unloads on the entire courtroom. Like, yo, you're doing all of this just to break one man out. Again, love you to death. Chris and Eris, love you all to death. But I am not doing this for neither of you. <laughs> this is not happening. <laughs> you know, but the most I'll do some shit where it's like, hey, y'all got it looking. Oh, shit, they got you. I tried. <laughs> I tried. I tried. I'm going to put money on your books, my nigga. <laughs> Oh, did y'all also now? Did y'all like? Uh, did y'all like seeing the um, the pre the pre Adobe After Effects explosion next to the chopper? All right, you know what? Look, I was looking at the. I I actually will wind that scene back three times because it did look right to me, and I was like, "Yo, what is with the? What is going on with the the, the Like, is that CGI? They can't be CGI. Oh, yo, here's the thing. Lance mows down that courtroom, and I'm like, well, that was easy. There was only, like, two guards. And I, wait, wait a minute. What was the line he said to the, to the, um, to the, um, to the district attorney? Did he say you're, you're about to get whipped or some shit like that? No, it was, that was from the line earlier, which was, hey, man, it's time to crack the whip. Yeah, it's time to crack the whip. Yeah. He looks at him and says, you know what? That's the same face that my daddy made when he said, t- and you know what he said to me? Watch it, son. It's loaded. That gets a 10 with me. That gets a 10 with me. D like that line. <laughs> I like how one of the bad guys literally combat roll through the fucking window and then get shot in the back. <laughs> Yo, there was like several of these guys. Then the motorcycle. No, the best part was that they had a truck back up into the, um to the I guess like one of the windows of the uh, courthouse. And, motorcycle and at least... Just... And at least five motorcycles ran out, came out the back of that thing. Meanwhile, Huff up in the helicopter, having a fight with um, Max's dad. Finally, they get low enough to the uh, courthouse where an unbelievable stunt happens. Boz hops out the helicopter go and falls through the sky roof and lands just flat on his face and gets directly back up. I'm like, bull crap. <laughs> I got some. I got something I want to throw out there, and this was such wasted material here. Like, and I'm talking about wasted potential material here. We got not Antonio Banderas in a white jumpsuit, <laughs> jump through a window <laughs> with a machine gun, looking like he's about to do some damage, and he no. got taken out by the military. I mean, nothing, man. I'm like, a lot of these guys just they get they got pieced off so easily, man. It was so like you said, so much wasted potential. It was so much wasted potential, my brother. I mean, brother. their job was basically, it felt like their job was to basically just drive around the courthouse, but I'm like, 
Well, at least the military did something because in most movies like this, you would have Boz be the one man army, which he is, and the and the military can't do anything. At least the military got some bodies on them, so I give him that. Yeah, yeah. the one, but you, but you're essentially right though, Chris, because when Boz fell through the sky, uh, the, the, uh, through that fell through the roof and shot up that whole room, they was like, what? He was like, um, they was on the radio, right? And it got back to uh, Henderson, and Henderson is like. All right, yon yon. Oh, <laughs> yo. <laughs> hey, hey, Lance knew what time it was. He was like, well, fuck, we're screwed. Uh, yeah, every man on himself. Oh, every man everybody for himself. Everybody for himself. Everybody for himself. Then, all right, all right, all right. Now, I mean. I'm sorry, I, gotta, I'm sorry, I, just, gotta, I just really got to go back to this. You separated yourself from the rest of the biker gang by looking as badass as you can look, and you get one shotted. Yeah, you know what, Eris, you're not going to get it off of that, are you? <laughs> no, because I really, really thought that we were going to get something with this guy. Nah. nah. You know what's the most wasted potential? Now, Eris, Chris, again, if I were to do a plant, plot like this, don't do this. They get him out of jail. They get him out and all. Then like, like I said, they, they save my boy from going to jail. He's on a motorcycle trying to get up out of there. They turn a the cu- corner. Boz is standing right there. <laughs> now you would think he would turn the opposite way and be like, ah, oh, shit, he got a gun. Let's get the fuck out of here. Nope, we're going to charge ahead. And it's so anticlimactic. The guy gets shot and the bike explodes. And I'm like, that was no, anticlimactic. He, dude, he launched a grenade at him. That was you a sure? grenade launcher. Yeah, that was, you know what? Here's the thing there. You say it was a grenade launcher. I turned, I rewinded that part at least seven times. I didn't see no grenade or nothing. I just, I'm like, I'm just going to assume one came out. <laughs> That's all I can but it's do. like, it's like you did all that to save this guy just for him to die. I'm thinking this dude was going to be super important. We're going to get like a hand to hand fight with him and Boz. Nope. Hey, Eris, Eris, I'm looking at you more than Chris on this one. I require you. To at least have a have a, a three minute hand to hand fight with whoever is trying to stop you from leaving that courthouse. All right, Chris, Chris, blaze! Look, you're going down in a blaze of glory. I'm talking. You're going to have the dual pistols wielding as you go down to the ground. That's what I at least want out of you. As 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 real as um as CU Space Cowboy is playing raindrops in the road. <laughs> I, I I need to have that song playing as it's happening. That's all I'm saying. Oh God! You know what? You know what? A part of me wants to go back at this thing and play the real folk blues. Yeah, <laughs> it will fit perfectly. <laughs> it fits with the scene. It really does fit with it because real you know, folk blues. You know the other thing that happened. The other thing that happens is we see, like we see Lance. Lance shows up, right? I'm sorry, uh, Chain shows up. And a man on the bike. <laughs> this is this. I'm sorry. Look, there's these several explosions <laughs> that happened in this movie. <laughs> this this was, is my favorite one. It what, is. It's yes, easy. What comes up, hold on. What comes up? What, what's about to take place here is about to be the greatest thing in the entire movie. My man is going to try to run down Joe <laughs> with a bike. <laughs> has a shotgun, an assault shotgun in his hand, aimed at him, ready to unload, you bike, no weapons, one man who can easily move to the left or to the right, <laughs> with a shotgun, and a window. You t- tell me, what are the odds? What are the odds that this is going to go horrifically wrong? <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. Usually when you fall off a bike, the bike just automatically falls down. Nope, not in nineteen, not not in Stone Cold. When you fall off a bike, the bike just keeps going and it flies through the window, hits the helicopter as Max dad is just like, no! Can I also point out something else? Just to show you how ain't shit of a character you are. My man didn't even take the time to aim the gun. He didn't even have to aim the shotgun down the sights. He didn't do nothing. He just held it out to the side. He didn't even look and yo, pulled the like, trigger. Yo, he was like, look at this nigga. I got his ass. He wouldn't even know. <laughs> yo, he no scoped your ass. He got no scope, man. Oh my gosh. That was hilarious. Now, here's the thing. Lance Henderson gets the brakes beat off of him. It ain't even a fucking fight. 
Oh man, he gets straight up his he gets his ass kicked straight up. I mean, it's it's kind of like the end of fucking New Jack City when fucking Ice T is kicking the shit out of fucking you know Wesley Snipes. Uh, it's like ah, well shit. Uh, can I also point that out too? By the way, since we are going to New Jack City territory, thank you for helping me with that, CJ, because I was about to make that connection. Um, <laughs> what happened? Like, what proceeds that after he like, after Lynch just gets. Probably the most long-winded ass whooping that we've seen in this movie. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Long-winded is the word. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, after this, uh, with here, I'm assuming everybody else would assume. Okay, he's either about to be put in handcuffs. He's done. Movie's done. Movie's over. Can we go ahead and roll the credits, please? What happens? Nah. Die-hard <laughs> ending. Dude, Thank he, you. Die-hard he pulls, ending. Hold on. He pulls a straight Carl. Takes the gun. Takes a gun from like, from the other cop, but gets murked out by like by uh, <clears throat> like by Stone's partner, and my man looks up realizing, holy shit, I'm dead, and he pulls off the Nino Brown coolest death fall ever. Hold on, prior to that though, <laughs> prior to that though, we got the news flash: your side lost. Fall down the stairs from Lance. Hey, can I, hey, oh. Can I also mention uh, my man who, like my man who shot Lance, had on the cleanest looking suit. Man, Yo, didn't he? man, Yo, that Murphy, like, one clean suit. And Murphy, like, yo, I'm looking good for this last scene, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Got on this tie, this sweet ass Easter suit, about to be lit. That's exactly what that was. My man had on an Easter suit. He showed, he showed up like, you know what? I wore this Easter suit just to shoot somebody. As, Bo- as, as the credits roll and Boz walks out bloodied as hell going down the stairs as he goes back to Alabama to feed his Komodo dragon. Yeah, he goes back to, no, he goes back to feed his Komodo dragon and to promptly lay down as much pipe as possible into his girlfriend. Yeah. Or tell his girlfriend, hey, what you still doing here? And I told your ass three weeks ago when I left, you can't stay here. Why you still here? <laughs> now, now, did, 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 no, no, no. This is something I also want to point out. So, hey, Lance, let me ask you something. If Nancy didn't get killed, what were you going to do? Were you really going to, like, get her out of it and take her with you? Or was that just cop talk for, yeah, I'm going to take you with me, as in I'm letting you walk out of this situation clean? I ain't I doing shit. That was. I think that's what that was. Look, you look, look. I ain't you really, like, oh, you like, oh, you really thought, like, oh, you really thought that we were gonna have a relationship or something? Nah, <laughs> no. I have, look, I have a fine piece of ass waiting for me back, like back home. I'm good. No, no, like, no, no, no. It'd be like this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why are you, why are you arresting me? Because I told you, I, like, like, why are you arresting me? I thought we were going to go off with each other, bitch. I need you to testify. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got a mortgage. I don't, have, I don't got time for you. <laughs> Like, what, 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 what kind of game did you think this was? Huh? Would you really? What you don't look? Well, I'm gonna kiss you. And I'm like, yeah, 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 girl, I got a relationship. What, what, what is it? What is this? I've been going out with my girlfriend for the last six years. Why well, I want your ass? Right, here's <laughs> I the kicker. Now, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. The movie ends with him walking out the courthouse and stuff, and the credits <laughs> are rolling, and random people are looking at him like, this guy is a man. This is so awesome. Let's go. Yeah, pretty much. That's what this is. I, I, I it was weird how they did that, right? It was I can, weird. You know, I can almost guarantee you that if this movie came out today, this scene alone of him the credit scene alone would have been used in the trailer. Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised that, that wasn't used in the trailer at the time. I'm surprised. Yeah, too. No, see trailers back like trailers back then, they're they're so like they were quite different from you know from how they are today. Like today, <laughs> you would actually see an ending in the trailer and not even know it. You would, you would, or you would just have somebody just over analyzing the trailer, saying like, well, "When are you gonna hear this and that in the movie?" And then when it's not in the movie, they bitch about it. <laughs> it's like Bosworth didn't do a split. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So guys, I have to ask a question: Are you glad I made? Are you glad that I made you watch this movie? <laughs> oh, I'm quite glad. I'm glad. I'm, I'm quite- actually quite happy because it's been a while since I've seen this movie. I you know, need, you know what, this, these, these movies here, this, this movie, this is a movie that needs to be added to my collection of just oddball as hell action movies that I own. Because y'all know, y'all yeah. know I got that DVD collection back home of these random 
off the fucking beaten path movies where you look and go, Harris, where the hell did you find this? I still. I- I was thinking about it today, like, Eris would have all these B-rated kung fu movies, these weird B-rated action movies, then BAM! Bullet. Bullet, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> Where did this <laughs> come from? You oh, have not Bullet, not a cinematic masterpiece. You have Bullet. Not what? Just, no, D, not just Bullet, but Bullet on Blu-ray. <laughs> Blu-ray, my nigga. Like, look, I got look, man. I got to get all of that scene where McQueen was going down San Francisco, and all you hear is the motors running. Man, you got to hear that shit in ten eight. You got to see that shit in ten eighty p, my nigga. You got to hear that uncompressed audio. <laughs> I know, man. Like y'all can't appreciate real cinema. <laughs> look, yeah. you don't call it real movie. He called it cinema. <laughs> what he wants to be serious. <laughs> but yeah, um, I will. I will definitely say, folks. If, I mean, hey, you know, the full movie is on is on YouTube. You can watch it and stuff. You enjoy it. It's 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 a very ridiculous movie, but it's it's just smooth nineteen nine peak early nineties fucking standard action movies. I mean, yeah. this was the this this was the God. This this was everything you needed. This movie had all the ingredients. And plus more of a two o'clock in the afternoon movie channel movie. I mean, think about it like this, right? Let's think about this. On a Sunday. On a Sunday. Now, let's think about it like this, right? In the 90s, you had your variety of action movies of different tempos. Like, it was Stone Cold. This is a movie that I couldn't see Steven Seagal doing. I couldn't see him doing this kind of movie. You could not see Seagal doing it, man. You needed this variety, and that's what that's what made a lot of the action stars of the '90s more important. Now, granted, they weren't important as you know as what we see now, but back then, because because I mean they weren't that important during the time because everybody would say, "Oh, you're trying to be Stallone," "Oh, you're trying to be Schwarzenegger," "Oh, you're trying to be this guy." Then you just had the guys that just wanted to do plain action. You know what I mean? I mean, think and, about it. You had your Bosworths, you had your Don the Dragon Wilsons, you had your. Jeff Speakman, who we're going to be talking about in another movie, and yep. stuff. You had those guys; they filled that void. Because, uh, 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 sir, sir, you're forgetting the the, the main one, the the master, Dudikoff. Yes, Dudikoff, Michael Dudikoff. Yeah. You know, they filled that void, and they and it's like you couldn't, I couldn't imagine seeing this actor in that movie because it's just they somehow were able to fill that void of those kind of those kind of niche movies. Yeah, Lorenzo Lamas another one but yeah we uh you, let's be real about you it. need renegade this. was the unofficial sequel to stone cold <laughs> you ain't lying renegade <laughs> thank you thank you chris thank you that was got unofficial uh, uh stone cold it really was but even though if, no, actually hey, no can renegade we say, oh wait can we also say that um since this was 1991 can we say that that stone cold was the unofficial sequel to Cobra. It kind of was, and it also was the prequel. Like, like, like what Chris just said, it was the prequel to um, Renegade because right after Stone, uh, after um, after Huff got home, he killed his girlfriend. That's what happened. That's how Renegade started. <laughs> I'm a rider. Doom, 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 doom. Ready yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'm a rider. <laughs> <laughs> As that show went on for five years on the fucking USA Network. Jesus uh, Christ, hey. man. Lorenzo Lamas. It made my wife grow up. Seriously. She she had a thing for Lamas. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> did she watch Blue? Did she watch, uh, what was the name of that fucking, uh, but, that, that, Pacific, that show with the, um, dude, but, the cops on the, on the bicycles? Oh, Pacific Blue. Yeah. Pacific yeah, Blue. <laughs> Oh god, I don't know, man. I don't, 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 a, don't, don't. I'm just saying, putting this out there. It should be a band podcast on those USA Network late night shows. Uh, yeah, yeah. What you do? Yeah. Definitely. Don't give, I'm, don't give, don't give Eris ideas. Nigga, he didn't have to give them ideas. I already had them. I mean, we already going to do Duckman at some point. It, it was bound to happen. Let's be real. Yeah. Like this, <laughs> like Duckman, the Weird Science Show. What was it Silk Stockings? La Femme Nikita. Oh, uh, oh. hey, don't blue. get me started on the film Nikita, my dude. That was my show. <laughs> uh, all, of, all of that early to mid-90s 
at, like just just goodness just oozes 90s i just laugh at pacific blue only because that was mario lopez's end to get to kind of revitalize himself a little bit <laughs> this is gonna be it for me man <laughs> <laughs> they, she's like hey they only see me as that dude from fucking from, from saved by the bill now i'm in pacific blue you know, you slater you slater you fuck you guys this is gonna be my it's gonna be my it's gonna be my opus. <laughs> hey, to his credit, he got five seasons out this show, so I give him that. I, yeah, I give, give him that. Him. But anyway, right. Stone Cold is done. Onward to the next movie. Yep, the next movie. This time, and, and Eris is the one that picked it, the and I, and I am so proud of her for that. I'm so proud of her. Deuces. <laughs>